So we've got the Bernstein Bears trick or treat. Because it's September right now. And next month is October. So next month is trick or treating. Even little bears expect a good fright when they go out for treats on Halloween night. Mwah, ah, 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 ah. Spooky. <laughs> spooky, spooky. I'm not sure there's anything. If mommy was a dinosaur, she'd be a spooky saurus. Haha. <laughs> trick or treat. The Bernstein Bears, trick or treat. Hmm. The sights and sounds of autumn were all around as Mama Bear pushed her shopping cart along the path that led to the Bear family's treehouse. The trees and shrubs were ablaze with color. Farmer Ben's pumpkin stood bright orange in October sun. The crows cr uh, crawled, crowed, the crows cawed noisily as they searched the stubble for bits of corn. Wild geese in the great V formations honked high in the sky as they flew south. But the surest sign the season was in, was inside the treehouse, hiding behind Papa Bear's easy chair. It was Brother Bear waiting to try out his Halloween costume on Mama. It wasn't Halloween yet, but Brother and Sister couldn't wait to try on a new costume. Sister was going to be a beautiful ballerina. Well, what do you think? she asked, twirling in third position. Shh, says Brother. Mama's coming. Brother had chosen to be a spooky monster on Halloween. He had bought a spookiest monster mask that he could find, and Mama made the rest of the costume. Boo! He shouted as Mama came in with the groceries. Help! A monster! She cried, pretending to be frightened. It's only me, Mama, he said, showing his face. So it is, said Mama. Well, that just goes to show that appearances can be deceiving. Appearances can't can be deceiving. What's that mean? asked sister. Just as a grown up way of saying things aren't always what they look like, explained Mama as she unpacked the groceries. Look, goodies, said brother. Hands off, please, said Mama. Those are for trick or treaters who come to our house tomorrow night. Brother and sister were very excited about Halloween and a little nervous too. That was the first year they had been going trick-or-treating without a grown-up along to supervise. I'm not sure how I like the idea of them going themselves, said Papa, as he carved the pumpkin he got from Farmer Ben. It's pretty spooky out there, he added, making scary faces at the cubs. I think the cubs are too young. They go by themselves. Now Papa, said Mama. If brother and sister want to accept the challenge of going on their own, I think we should encourage them. But remember, she continued, turning to the cups, there'll be strict rules. You'll stay in your own neighborhood and you won't eat any of the treats until you get back home. Besides, said brother, we won't really be by ourselves. We made a trick-or-treat date with Cousin Freddie and Lizzie Brune and Queenie McBear. There, said Papa, putting the finishing touches on the jack-o'-lantern. Then he lit a candle inside and turned out the lights. It was pretty scary. The next day, brother and sister began planning the trick-or-treat route. They'd follow that night. Brother got a pencil and a paper and made a map of the neighborhood. That way, he explained, they wouldn't miss anybody. Let Let's see now, he said. We'll stop at our houses first. Of course, Freddy's and Lizzie's and Queenie's. And then do Farmer Ben's and then do Sister and Mrs. Grizzle. Mrs. Grizzle for sure, agreed Sister. She usually makes special Halloween cookies. And Teacher Jane, she gives out good stuff. How about, Grizz How about Dr. Grizzly, asked Brother. She's into health snacks. I think so, just to be polite, said Sis. Gramps and Gran, of course, of course. I'll tell you one place we're going to miss, said Brother, folding up his mat. That, what place is that, asked Sister. 
that one, he answered, pointing out the window, the home of the old Miss, uh, Miss Gris. It was spooky, twisted old tree in a, th in a thicket in the end of the crooked lane. We're definitely not going there, he added with a shiver. Why ever not, asked Mama, who was listening. Why not, said the cubs. Because she's a witch, that's why not. That's not very nice. What utter nonsense, protested Mama. True, Miss Grizz is old and bent, rather forbidding looking. But I can assure you she's a perfectly nice person. But the cubs didn't believe her, not one for one minute. They knew better. They knew, everybody knew better. No doubt about it. Miss Grizz was a witch for sure. Just after jar dark, a pirate, a skeleton, and a wicked queen from Snow White came for brother and sister. They were Freddy, Lizzie, and Queenie, of course. And together they ventured out in the darkness with their own trick-or-treat bags. I think the bears are a bit older than you and Josh. That's why Mommy and Daddy and Uncle go with you. Before they could get started collecting Halloween goodies, they were joined by some worrisome company, Too Tall Grizzly and his gang, out for mischief. Too Tall didn't waste any time trying to get brother, sister, and their friends to go along with him and his gang. Come on, we'll show you goody good, goody goods, how to have some f real Halloween fun, he said, pulling brother along with him. What sort of fun, asked brother wearily. Oh, you might say we're going to put the trick back in a trick-or-treat, he said, chuckling. It was so dark that Brother and the others didn't notice where they were heading. Hey, said Sister, this is Crook Lane. That's right, said Too Tall. We're going to play a few tricks on old witch McGriss. <laughs> what sort of tricks, asked Brother. Her gnarled, twisted old treehouse loomed ahead first, whispered Too Tall, taking a roll of toilet paper. Bubby, are you okay? Scary. It's too scary? Okay. What if I talk in a not scary voice and I hold your hand? <laughs> hold my hand. First, whispered Too Tall, taking a roll out of toilet, toilet paper. What? He's taking a roll of toilet paper out of his jacket. We'll decorate our house with a little of this. Then maybe we'll tie a few knots in our clothesline. Then smear some honey on our broomstick so she'll stick to it when she gets on to fly. Oh, that's not very nice. You're going to put toilet paper on her tree and her house? So much mess to clean up. But before Too Tall and his gang could start their mischief, the front door opened and a bright yellow light stabbed into the darkness uh, and there in the doorway stood the frightening figure of old Miss Gris. Aha, she said in a gravely voice, I'm ready for you. Oh, she's going to give him candy because it's trick or treat, of course. And then the terrified cubs got into a cozy living room. To their great surprise, there was a big tray of beautiful candy apples and prepared for Halloween vis visitors. Mama was right, whispered sister to brother. Miss Grizz really is a sweet kind of old person. The cubs thanked her for her beautiful apples and went, went the rest of their trick-or-treat business. Uh-oh. Are you poisoned? Oh, I don't think so. They'll have to investigate when they get home. Later that evening, brother and sister were at home looking over all their treats. Remember we talked about that? When we get treats from people, strangers, we never eat them right then and there. We put them in our pocket and we bring them home for mom and dad to inspect. We just talked about this. The beautiful candy apples stood out. Papa asked where they came from. From Miss Gris, asked brother, or answered brother. From that scary-looking old grouch puss that lives down the crooked lane? 
said Papa. That's right, said Brother, taking a delicious bite out of his candy apple. Oh. You must really try to remember, Papa, said Sister. Giving an apple a quick lick, appearances can be quite deceiving. What is it? The end.